Welcome to Animated Science Biology. This time we're talking about the molecules of life, known as the biomolecules. So in your body, you're made up of about 37 trillion cells, and all of the other creatures that we see with our eyes are going to be made up of somewhere above a trillion cells as well. Now in these cells, there's a billion to five trillion molecules, depending on the cell, according to estimates made. And 60% of those molecules are going to be water molecules, and the other 40% are going to be some small inorganic ions and also our large organic biomolecules. And most of these molecules are going to be able to fit into just four categories. So those four are proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, and nucleic acids. So we may get a video on each one of these categories individually, especially the proteins, because the proteins are very diverse because they play a role in almost every cellular function that we're going to be talking about in this course. One specific protein is enzymes, because we're going to talk about a couple of enzymes today. And the reason is because enzymes are going to catalyze most of the reactions that take place in the cell. In addition to proteins, we also have carbohydrates, which we are looking at a glycogen molecule here. And carbohydrates are the primary energy source because most of our metabolism centers around glycogen. Also, we have nucleic acids and these guys are very popular because all of our DNA is fitting within this category. So we have a couple of other molecules that are going to fit into this category such as ATP uh, which is a big one and our RNA which is going to help in the protein synthesis pathway and last but not least our best friend the lipids. And so the lipids definitely have a bad reputation, especially when it comes to nutritional values. However, the lipids are playing very important functions and roles, and we really can't assign just one function to them uh, to fit all of the lipids. However, one function that is usually associated with them is long-term energy storage. And with that, we cannot forget about our best friend, the phospholipid, which is going to be separating the cell from its external environment. So check out our plasma membrane videos uh, to get a detailed explanation of the phospholipids. So all of these categories are considered the macromolecules. Now, these go by many different names, such as the macromolecules, the biopolymers, uh, but the biopolymer name describes its relation to its building blocks. So a polymer is a molecule that is built by similar building blocks known as monomers. So each one of these categories, uh, each one of these molecules is built by smaller individual molecules that are just repeating units of itself. So the proteins are made of amino acids. The nucleic acids are made of nucleotides. The carbohydrates are made of monosaccharides, also known as simple sugars. And the lipids are made of fatty acids. It's also important to note that the lipids do have a few exceptions, like the steroid molecules, uh, which are gonna have some slightly different structures. So it's really easy to get caught up in the chemistry of these monomeric building blocks. However, what we want to look at today is kind of just their relationship 
um, kind of to Legos. So we're going to be taking these monomers and we're going to be putting them together like Legos and they're going to be building our large molecules that are playing these important roles. Um, so don't get too caught up in the chemistry of it. Um, if you are interested in the chemistry of it, we will have some chemistry videos talking about these specific reactions and some intermediate videos um, on the building of and the building and the breakdown of these macromolecules. So one thing that we need to understand before we progress is how the monomers are going to build the polymers because there is a specific way that matches every single category here. So let's start with the amino acids. So the amino acids, uh, they kind of look like this structure. They have two very important sides. They have a positive and a negative side and those positive and negatives are going to be attracted because positive and negative is attracted. And an enzyme is going to help catalyze this reaction called a dehydration reaction. So basically all that means is that a water molecule is released from these two and the two amino acids are joined together. And so this reaction continues on. We have another one where the negative and the positive is attracted and another one comes by and the water molecule is released. And so all of this is done with the assistance of an enzyme. And so for the amino acids specifically to develop our proteins, there are a large number of steps that go into this. For now, we're gonna keep it as simple as beads on a string. And so what I mean by that is that we can look at these amino acids coming together. For right now, we can ignore their chemical structure and look at these beads that are just assembling together. And each time they join together, we have a water molecule that is being released. And so during protein synthesis, we're usually going to have many, many amino acids that are joined together. And so these guys all come together using the same reaction until we get somewhere upwards of anywhere from 100 to uh, in the thousands of amino acids. And so all of these beads on a string are going to form some three-dimensional structures like the one we see here. So this is an antibody, um, very important for our immune system. But this antibody, three-dimensional shape, is made of uh, about 10,000 amino acids which came together to form this shape. Now all of the other monomeric building blocks are using the same reaction to join together to make their macromolecules. So here we look at the nucleotides. They come together um, a little less uniform and they perform the dehydration, which means the water is released. And that reaction occurs over and over and over again until we have a huge uh, nucleic acid. And for this specific one, it is our best friend, uh, the DNA molecule. Our simple sugars are then going to do the same exact reaction. Uh, so we have them joined together. A water molecule is released and we have the synthesis of the large structure. And so here we're forming the glycogen branches. And so we've got many, a couple thousand simple sugars or a couple thousand uh, monosaccharides that are joined together to make this structure. And lastly, the lipids, they do something a little bit different. They have a glycerol head, which is going to help them join together. But when these three fatty acids come together to join with the glycerol, um, they are still going to use our dehydration reaction to synthesize the molecule. And so we have a pretty small macromolecule here, uh, but we have a triglyceride, which is a types of lipids.
So one last thing that we need to talk about before moving on is how we break down these large structures, um, especially when we start to get into digestion and um, how we're going to be able to utilize these um, and change them into other molecules. But first, we're going to have to break down these large structures. Uh, so the breakdown process is exactly the same, but the opposite. So if we have a protein branch here, we got amino acids, pretty much just beads on a string. These guys are going to go through a hydrolysis reaction. And so hydrolysis, we break that word down. Lysis means splitting. Hydro means water. So we're going to take a water molecule, split that up, and push that onto each side of the molecule. Um, so uh, it is essentially the exact opposite of the dehydration reaction. So one way I remember this is hydrolysis splits the molecule. Lysis is splitting, even though it's talking about the water splitting. And dehydration reaction is building the molecule. So hydrolysis, we are breaking down the molecule here, and the water is splitting up the amino acids. And so that is true of the rest of the macromolecules. Hydrolysis is going to be the way that they are broken apart in most cases. So that does it for today's video. In the next video, we're going to go in detail about proteins and hopefully get to enzymes soon. Uh, so we'll see you in the next video. Thanks, guys. If you learned something, please give me a like and subscribe. It really helps me know that you guys are watching and you are learning some stuff um, so definitely hit that subscribe button